r slash ask reddit by planet reddit serious safety osher inspectors of reddit what is the most maddening dumbest violation you've seen in a workplace i used to work as a safety consultant for an insurance broker one of our insureds had an employee who was tasked to apply a do not enter compactor starts automatically sign on a cardboard box compactor the idiot set the can of spray adhesive on the lip of the compactor knocked it in and then jumped in the compactor to get it of course it started automatically because it's a machine that can't tell idiot from box he's lucky some else was walking by and saved his life edit he went into the compactor after sticking the sign to the front of it i used to have to climb down the cardboard chute at work all the time i'd take the key down with me that way the machine couldn't start lock out tag out i was on the workplace health and safety committee the committee head at the time decided to change a light bulb do you think that she used a step ladder on the sloped surface nope office chair with wheels and nobody to hold it still so many stupid decisions in that last sentence of course she fell broke her arm and received workplace compensation the kicker the light bulb wasn't blown she was just using the wrong light switch. The light bulb wasn't blown. She was just using the wrong light switch. Bro. Just wow. This is like the real life version of a joke. Worked in a hospital lab and higher ranked co-worker asked me to take inventory of things from our liquid nitrogen storage tank. Minus 200c mind you. I asked her for the proper mitts to handle our stuff and she told me to just use our usual latex gloves. WTF. My company rents the lab space of the hospital so I'm assuming she doesn't know where it is and doesn't care to ask. I proceed to ask the hospital lab staff for proper mitts to which I was given. After I took inventory. Coworker decided she wanted to do a verification inventory check and had the audacity to ask me for the proper mitts. Gfo. Duck. I work with liquid nitrogen in a lab too and I make them buy a new pair if the others are even remotely damaged bugger messing around with that port state inspector for me and most of my colleagues it's things relating to fire safety particularly fire doors the amount of time i've found auto closing doors tied wedged weighted or just fixed in the open position is maddening fire is the worst thing that can happen on a ship and these doors have to be able to be closed at any time but people are too ducking lazy to open a goddamn door so they tie them open and then guess what? Time and time again there is a fire and when we do the investigation, assuming there is anything left to investigate, we find a fire door fixed open that's allowed to fire to spread. People in my industry literally die every year because some ducking ab or assistant engineer to two ducking lazy to open a door. Edit. So that's the most maddening. The dumbest would be when a captain tries to stop us from coming on board in the first place. For your information if you are working in the marine industry. Never try this. It will end badly for you. One of two things will happen. We will just refuse your ship access and blacklist you. Or we will allow you in and then immediately detain the ship. I remember one captain stood on the gangway and tried to block me and my boss from boarding. He said this is unreasonable. We have had no time to clean up or anything and demanding we come back after he had finished cargo operations hearty laughs were had and we told him he had however long it was going to take us to walk back up to the harbour master station and walk back down with royal police escort and that in the meantime the ship was detained. Shock they don't have magnetic fire doors then. The ones that are always open then close on alarm. Now I know what the purpose of those doors are. No one in school could ever explain to me the purpose of doors closing automatically during fire drills. I always thought it was a safety hazard in case people became trapped. Worked in a warehouse that repaired tools and equipment for erecting wind turbines. There was one beloved program manager that always met schedules early and under budget. All the execs loved him. But his equipment came back basically disassembled and reassembled with all the safety checks removed so they'd work faster. The way they rigged up the electrical equipment was downright scary. He'd hire unqualified lifting equipment inspectors for his worksite instead of relying on the corporate guys who took their time and kept documentation on everything. Stuff like that. Cutting corners whenever he could. But he got everything done on time so he was a golden goose. 
Every time I hear of an accident at a wind farm I wonder if it's related to that guy. Shouldn't this kind of thing be reported? Even anonymously? It always should be but it rarely is. Wasn't our plant but another plant for our company. We have these huge steel drums that we fill with 100 s of pounds of ingredients that go onto a hydraulic lift that lifts and tilts the drum and pours the contents into a kettle. The drum shifts forward a little bit on the lift while all the way up and falls back into place on its way down. The operator was resting his hand on the bottom of the lift while lowering it back down and the drum fell back down on his finger and pretty much turned it into mush. That's not the worst part. Afterwards the safety lead was doing a review of the incident and another operator showed the safety lead exactly what happened and smashed his finger in the same manner. That's utterly golden. I can't tell you how many times I've had to stop EE number 2 from doing what EE number 1 was doing when they hurt themselves. Most of the time it's been a supervisor showing me how they couldn't possibly get hurt doing that. I taught skydivers to be tandem instructors. One drop zone bought a new type of tandem rig and faked their training. Management had them lie about it to me and another examiner. Chief instructor's excuse. They're all the same anyway. He had a malfunction caused by his not knowing how the rig worked. And his poor paying first time passenger had no idea the danger this arrogant prick put him through. The worst thing was the training was free. Seriously. WTF. For sale. Tandem rig. Only used once. Never been opened. Small stain. You reported them to the FAA. Right? Those guys need to get new jobs in some other industry. We received a complaint about workers using liquid nitrogen inside of a confined space. I went out to this sand and gravel company and saw this 30 feet long above ground storage tank. There was a liquid nitrogen tank outside the opening and two workers outside. I showed my ID and discovered one of the workers outside was the foreman and the other was monitoring the air quality for the workers. All good. Right? Nope. The entrance was a small square opening at the end. There were about 4 workers inside the tank using liquid nitrogen to cool the tar in the tank so it could be chipped out. So. They were introducing a gas which could displace oxygen. The person doing air monitoring had a probe only a couple feet long. So it was only really checking the air quality of the fresh air mixed with tank air. Not the air in the workers breathing zone. The workers were about 15 feet into the tank. They had no confined space training. No confined space permit. No rescue plan. The foreman then copped an attitude and told me I was wasting their time. I red tagged the operation, normally reserved for only when voluntary immediate compliance seems unlikely, and told them it was illegal for them to continue work or re enter the tank until they met the confined space rules. It was a pretty hefty fine, the company didn't appeal. I think the foreman got fired as management seemed unaware that the activity was taking place and was further upset at the foreman's reaction. Normally. Sand and gravel companies in my area do a good job with health and safety, it was a rare miss for them. A place my father-in-law worked had a guy die in a tank that was being cleaned. They had all the required procedures, the guy just didn't follow them. Working alone. No ventilation. Not asked to do the job by anyone. He just did it. A lot changed after that. Working alone. Not asked to do the job by anyone. So apparently no one saw anything. Heard anything or asked him to get in the tank. I worked in a lab doing citomegalovirus research. One day we had workers in replacing the lights and one said wow I always thought those shower things were real pointing at one of the emergency showers in the lab. These are for heavy duty chemical spills where you run under the shower and pull the handle to decontaminate. Turns out ours were just the shower heads in the ceiling not connected to any water. We used extremely dangerous chemicals every day. We got the showers hooked up pretty quickly after that. Goddamn. I hope whoever installed those originally faced some consequences. I worked EHS for a set of labs at a university. While doing an inspection. It turns out that the vent hoods vented into the crawl space above the ceiling. I work as a fire safety and H&S officer. At one of my sites. This particular one being a small medium sized shop. I was made aware of a hidden room. There's a narrow corridor to enter that they blocked off whenever they knew I was coming. No fire door so any fire spreads straight onto the main shopping area. 
The room contains a plethora of 400 stroke 415 volt panels. And is absolutely rammed with wood. Cardboard boxes. And what felt like every combustible material possible. Roughly 30 years worth of crap. Essentially. The mother of all fire hazards with enough immediate fuel and oxygen to burn down the building and neighboring stores. The maddening part of it was essentially all the staff at the shop were aware of it but did nothing to fix the issue and even actively worked to hide it. If you see a fire hazard please fix it or report it. Also the sole fire escape was jammed due to the door warping and would not open at all. Having not been checked in I imagine the roughly 2 months since I was last on site. The maddening part of it was essentially all the staff at the shop were aware of it but did nothing to fix the issue and even actively worked to hide it. If you see a fire hazard please fix it or report it. I think the reason for this is that there probably aren't enough resources to deal with the problem. And instead a rumor is spread that the fire safety people are unreasonable. If you'd tell them to put all that stuff somewhere else and install a fire door you'd definitely hear that they have nowhere else to put it. And they'd absolutely think that suddenly they want us to put a fire door in when we've had it like this for so long with no trouble grumble grumble. I'm not a safety inspector but this came to mind. I am an electrician in Las Vegas. One job site I was on was the remodel of the hotel tower at Caesars Palace. We started at the bottom floor and worked our way up the tower one floor a week for a year. It was horrible air conditions. Major demolition. Massive dust, because the hotel windows in Vegas don't open in order to keep people from jumping out. They rely on exhaust fans to circulate air but don't run the fans for the subhuman construction workers like myself. Then after almost a year. Coughing and gagging when we were on the very last floor, level 44, a team of men showed up in hazmat suits and shut the job down. Apparently all of the sparkly dust we were breathing every day was almost entirely asbestos. FML. If the asbestos thing is true and you've got it documented you work there you've got a lawyer's wet dream of a case. I don't have any health problems yet. But I am anticipating it. They say that your risk of getting mesothelioma from asbestos goes up 10x if you are a smoker. Which I am not. My dad works on a large renovation project for a national landmark he identified a hazard where workers putting up scaffolding would have to walk along the sloped incline of a plateau that functioned as the foundation for a construction shack. All the while carrying the scaffolding components they didn't he have to walk up the hill. Or down the hill. But along the entire width of the sloped base this is a hazard since workers had no form of handrails other support and could easily twist their ankles or lose their balance. He notified the foreman about this in the morning. He didn't he think it a problem he notified the site manager of this in response. But he was in meetings all morning. That afternoon. He spots a group of three guys walking on the construction site shorts. Sandals. And no helmets he walks up to them. So gents. What are we doing? You now you need steel toe boots and helmets right? Yes sir. But we're just leaving and heading home. We all twisted our ankles and can't continue working. Sure enough. All of them had scraped bruised knees and shins that were the workers putting up the scaffolding. Every single one of them. Sad that the workers were injured. But hopefully the foreman learned his lesson. Former safety rep who specialized in industrial food manufacturing working for the largest food companies. I am now in school for psychology so am interning at a clinic. In my interview I said that was my previous career so they asked me to do their EAP and EXIT maps. Yet they won't buy the fire extinguisher signs. The thing I repeatedly tell them to do is unlock one of the doors leading to a exit door. They have a storage file room with one of the emergency exits and you can't walk in the room even if the door is unlocked. That's no good. The latter issue seems a bit too similar to the infamous triangle shirt waist fire. This was a fire in 1911 where garment workers were unable to flee a fire because the door leading to the stairs was locked and almost 150 people died. I can understand that comparison. The issue with this is HIPAA requires files be locked away and they decided to lock the files in a room with a fire exit. What bothers me for some reason more is this room gets used as storage so the floor has no clean and clear walk path. I've worked for a couple of engineering contractors in the past. My first firm was by far the worst for lack of work ethic and sheer incompetence. R slash Osha would have a field day with them. One time. 
a reciprocating saw broke. The foot that held the blade in place was busted. So rather than follow protocol and get another saw, my co-worker fastened the blade in place with a plastic wire tie and proceeded to use it. The same firm worked as contractors for the company my dad worked for. So he has the best worst stories about them. On one site. They'd found that sections of a pipeline had been sealed with asbestos gaskets. The boss of my firm, I'll call him Jim, was present on this site. And had to call in a specialist to remove the asbestos. Jim would never wear safety gear like the other guys. Claiming to be exempt. And so when the specialist turned up in full breathing gear and overalls and tried to do his job. Jim just stood leaning on the pipe in his normal clothes talking to him. My dad and the others are stood well away from the asbestos at this point. And he shouts out. Jim. What? Are you immune? Immune to what? Ducking asbestos. My dad says that Jim has defied all facets of medical science by staying alive this long. Someone post a writing prompt about Jim being an immortal who just doesn't give enough of a shit to hide anymore. Asbestos Hancock? Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.